She's saying that um, after she left, uh, she wasn't. She she had the ma um, the machine and everything to you know practice the centuries, but she was worried about what to eat and how to get food every single day. So it was very hard for her to focus on just song. So what she have to do is that she have to do the tea and size so she can send some small money back home mm -hmm. and she can take care of herself here. What do you want to tell me about where you come from? How can you describe it to somebody like me who never saw the place before? <laughs> Let's say I never been there before. He said come to my come to my place. How would you describe it? Okay. I'll the I'll tell the person that when the person came inside the concomber market, the person will ask somebody, I need this side. The name is uh, Pata. We call that place Pata side. Pata side. Or the place they make him flee evening time. The person will know that place. And Okay, I had never been to Agbaboshi before, and I went just to do my shopping, shopping for vegetables. I heard they were cheap. It's the agricultural depot of the country, and uh, I was. The place is enormous, uh, and the shopping area is like several football fields. I have no idea. I have never even been able to explore it, all of it. And after you shop for so long, it's you're holding all these bags. And I was with uh, this uh, a brother who lived in the guest house where I was staying, and and he just turned to me and said, uh, "I mean, not to give me your bags and you know put them here." And I turned around and he was kind of loading them into this pan, and uh, and it's a very chaotic place. And so there were so many things going on, and I. I'm giving him my bags and he's loading them and I'm sort of thinking, what is he going to do with my bags, you know? And then I turn around and look and this little girl stands up and turns around and looks at us. And, and so, so she has all of our bags on, on, in this pan on top of her head. And actually I was holding a watermelon, was like the last thing in my hands. And she was looking at me to hand her the watermelon, you know, and... I was first just stunned at how young she was. And we just became sort of transfixed on each other. Um, she looked to me at a, about 11 or 12. And it was just, it was one of those moments where I think as an adult, ad adult we meet children sometimes that kind of immediately transport us back to our childhood. And I felt that. I immediately saw myself as this 11-year-old carrying these loads. And she looked so small for the load that we had on her head. And so I immediately started trying to take things out of this pan. And she's trying to get this watermelon off of my hands, you know, and get it, into, get it on top of her head. And I was like, this is too much. It's too heavy. And she was insisting. And um, as she walked, as we all walked out of the market together, and she's, she's got mostly all of our things on top of her head, mm -hmm. I am just, was just watching her, and I just had all of these questions. Um, and I, at that point, I, was, I didn't consider myself a stranger to the African experience. I had been living in Ghana for a year, uh, or more, and I had lived in Senegal previously, and this was my second time living in Ghana, and so I was somewhat used to seeing children working. I was uh, familiar with poverty. It wasn't like just because she's a child and she's working, this is a stunning experience for me. There was something that was different and very peculiar about her circumstances, and 
it struck a chord in me that felt extremely personal. Mm -hmm. And as we left that market, it was, I had this experience of sort of knowing that if I don't do something, then I'm not the person that I thought, that I've always thought myself to be. Mm -hmm. And it, I really felt like I had reached a crossroad. It's that, that place of either act on all of your beliefs or turn away completely from you know, this image that, or this sort of person that all of, my, um, all of my values, all of the principles that I felt like I was living my life by, now it was like life was asking me mm. back mm. to express them, to do something about them, to really make them real. And one of the things that most inspired me about them, again, was that they weren't asking for charity. They were really asking for an opportunity. And so when my father came, he was also really moved by, by them, you know, by what they were doing and all of their potential. And so we decided to ask every girl that we met if she could change one thing about their life, about her life, what would it be? And it was startling. Every single girl that we asked said exactly the same thing. What did they say? they all said that they would learn to sew. How I understood that was that I would, learn, I would learn a trade that would allow me to do something productive, take care of myself, contribute something, be creative, um, give something, and always be able to do that no matter where I am, no matter what my circumstances. And then sewing and West Africa, as far as I have seen it, is a very esteemed trade. Yeah. I mean, these are the clothes that your brothers and sisters, your uncles and aunts, your babies, everyone is wearing. Right. And you sewed them. I mean, right. we, it's, I sewed that with my hands and I put that on their backs and I get to feel proud because my uncle is wearing a shirt that I sewed and he also gets to say that, you know, my niece sewed this shirt for me. And so I don't blame them for wanting to learn something that they can see the fruits of their labor, and it's a loving, giving act. Right. And, uh, and for us, my father and I, we felt, wow, that's so doable. Mm -hmm. All of these girls could say anything. You know, I, I expected people to say things like I would have a big house, you know, I would have a million dollars, just, you know, material things. But what they said was that I would have something that I could give. Right. I would have something that I could do. That's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. and that I think was um, really sort of a turning point because it's, it, again, it was just one more thing that kind of strengthened my belief in these young women and how much, I mean, no one deserves an opportunity more than anyone else, but I heard them speaking to me in a way that I could understand and also really moved me to do something and so we thought you want to learn to sew we should be able to figure out how to teach you how to sew right. and so we we wanted to do something that was uh, that would provide them a training opportunity at the same time they were being paid for a product that we could sell and continue to generate the resources to continue the effort mm -hmm. and bring on more women and so this sort of a very self-reliant entrepreneurship. Mm. Um, and the challenge is that they really were learning. Mm. And um, most of them had never been, had never had the opportunity to be creative before. Uh, and so when we, when, when we would ha ask them to do small things like draw a picture, they really wanted, they were so uncomfortable with that, with just the space to be creative. And so it was very challenging f from, from the beginning. Uh, but we brought in an experienced tailor who, uh, also from the northern region, and uh, designed a, a, a product that we felt would express the culture the, uh, that w uh, would allow them an authentic experience right. and not producing something that was just completely foreign, right. but using 
West Africa is known for its textiles. Right. And, uh, and I've always loved the textiles in this region. I mean, it, the artistry is incredible. And so we worked, decided to work with tie-dyes, batiks, woven cloths, and to bring them into products that were based on the African-American quilting tradition. And so the entire project would be this very cross-cultural African diasporan experience where they got to work with uh, artistry that was true to their own traditions and also creating something that spoke to the rest of the world and themselves in, in a way that's historical and then something innovative and new. I'm